Hello and welcome to Hey Ivan, a channel where people ask tech questions. Today's question comes to us from Jane, who asks, what's the best way to organize digital photos, or maybe the best app for doing that? To which I say, wow, <laughs> this question takes me way back. I remember when I got my first digital camera back in the early 2000s, and the way I used to manage my photos was really simple. I created a folder on my computer, and I named that folder the year. So if it was 2000, I'd name the folder 2000, so that's 2000. Then the number for the month, so if it was January, it would be 01. And then after that, the word January. And the reason I did that is because when you sort the folders, they sort alphabetically into the correct chronological order. And so that was great for me. There weren't so many apps for managing photos and organizing them well back in the day, but Google eventually came out with a program called Picasa, and that was the one that I gravitated toward. I liked it because what you were able to do after you install the app is you could point it at a folder on your computer. So you'd point it at this folder and say, hey, if you ever notice any new pictures show up, automatically include them in this nice gallery view that you provide. And for me, that was wonderful because it gave me a visual way to browse through all of my photos instead of having to stop on each one, open it up and see if that was the picture that I wanted. Unfortunately, Google eventually decided to replace Picasa with a different app altogether, Google Photos, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So if you want to organize photos and you want the best way to do that, you know the answer you're going to get from me is it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do. So the first question I'd ask you would be, do you want your photos to be stored in the cloud or not? Because it turns out that's the biggest consideration when planning to organize your photos. If you don't want your photos on the cloud, there are definitely a few options that are available for you, and we'll talk about some of them here. But I, I do want to preface it by saying there are lots and lots of choices that are out there. Some of them look beautiful. Some of them work really well. Some of them are functional, but you'll get to decide which you like best. I'm going to list a few, and if you have any that you use that I don't mention, please be sure to drop a comment and let us know. Okay, the first one we're going to talk about is from Adobe, and it's called Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is free. It's a photo management app that you can install on your computer, and I'm focusing first on non-cloud, so this is something you can use without storing your photos online. If you're familiar with Adobe and you're a professional photographer, you're probably using Adobe Lightroom, which also has some photo management capabilities, but it has a monthly subscription associated with it. So for most of us who aren't photo or photography experts or do photography for a living, Lightroom might be a little bit overkill for you, but it's also a viable option. The trade-off though is that Adobe Lightroom works with Adobe's Creative Cloud, and that's an online component. Adobe Bridge, check it out. Another option is a program that's for Windows called Studio Line Basic Four. That's a free app from Studio Line. They do have several options that are available for purchase as well. But if you're looking for simple photo management with good organizational tools and something that's not going to cost you a ton of money, it's worth checking out if you're on Windows. Another option that's available for Windows is something called Magic's Photo Manager, which costs around $50 US. And based on everything that I've seen about this app, it looks really good. If you're on Windows and you don't have a photo management software and you don't want to be on the cloud, you should definitely check out Magic's Photo Manager, which has a free trial so that you can become familiar with some of the features that are available. Next, I'm going to mention something that I use, although I don't take advantage of the photo features, I do find it to be pretty capable in its own right, and that's something called Plex. Plex is a free media server that's available to be installed on a variety of platforms. You may even notice that you have Plex as an option on your smart TV. And what you can do is on a computer, Windows or Mac, you can install Plex and you can say, hey Plex, I'd like to create a library that contains just photos. And then what you can do is dump a bunch of photos or folders with photos in them into that place that you tell Plex to look. And just like my Picasa from long, long, long ago, it can look at that folder and automatically create for you a beautiful album that lets you see all of the pictures in one place. And what's great about it is that it leans on the metadata that's in the photos to help you organize things by location, by time, a whole variety of information available for you. The trade-off or the downside, I guess, is that you have to dedicate a machine to run Plex. So when you run it, it will show you all of this information. The cool thing though, is that there are smartphone apps that can allow you to access the photos that are on your computer from other devices in your home on Wi-Fi without putting things on the cloud. So that's a definite plus. If you're interested in checking Plex out, you can find it at plex.tv. 
Now, if you're on a Mac, you don't need to go far to look for an app to organize your photos. There are some options that are available, but I find that for what I need, the built-in Photos app is free, it's already installed on your Mac, and you can turn off the cloud function so that you don't worry about pushing things out to the cloud if that's not something you're into. And what's great about Photos is it uses machine learning, all of the information that's in your photos to figure out location, to figure out time and date. It can recognize faces and objects. You can search for all of your photos that have footballs and find uh, all of your football photos in one spot. Now, if you're interested in going to the cloud or you don't have a problem going to the cloud, the advantage is that your photos will be available on all of your devices that have access to the internet and are signed into your cloud account. Now for Android users, for people with Google accounts, even for iPhone users with Google accounts, Google Photos is a good option to store all of your pictures. Some people have concerns about using Google, but I would say this, if you have a strong password, you already have a Google account and you've turned on two-factor authentication, then Google is a great option for organizing and managing your photos. And the reason that it's so great is that it uses a lot of machine learning to organize your photos for you automatically. So again, it leans on information, date, time, location. You can say, let me see all of my photos that are from Cabo San Lucas. And with just a few words, all of those pictures show up organized by time, organized by year. And you can even browse through your photos based on the faces of the people who are in them. So it's really cool. Now, if you're on iPhone or iPad or Mac, you can use the Photos app there as well. The built-in Photos app from Apple does a great job. And if you do a feature comparison of Apple versus Google, you'll find that many of the features in the Photos app are available in the Google app and likewise. So in my opinion, either one of those approaches is great. What have I used? I use both and there's no reason that you can't use both. You can. It's possible to use an iPhone and install the Google Photos app and tell the Google Photos app, hey, whenever you see new pictures show up on my iPhone, pull in a copy to my Google account. It works really well. I'm surprised at how well it works. And what's really nice with both Google and with Apple is that they surface memories for you. So as you go through time, you'll see pictures that are recommended for you, like pictures from a year ago today, or pictures from this last time that you were in this location, or perhaps a person over the years. You can tap and see an automatically generated slideshow that shows your kids from their smallest all the way up through their current age. And if you take video as well as pictures, the videos show up side by side. And these interactive slideshows they're kind of tear jerkers and on iPhone there are widgets that you can put onto the home screen so you can see these pictures and every time you lift your phone a new photo is presented to you so it, it changes the experience from something that's like photo management something you have to think about and work at into something that's more automatic so that every time you visit your phone you'll see memories that can take you back and help you to remember those great experiences that you've had that's photos on the cloud photos on your device is there an app that you like to use please share in the comments i hope that you've enjoyed this video thank you for stopping by oh like and subscribe <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one